I want you to tell me right now. Who the fuck killed my son? It's gotta be an inside job. I can do it in two weeks. You know what I wish you could do in 20 years? I'm not do bear a grudge. So we have Wrath of Man, which I believe was actually a movie that was scheduled to come out this year and not another one that was pushed back. Could be wrong. Don't know. But here we are. Um, I'm not going to lie. When I first saw the trailers for Wrath of Man, it went on. It went online first and people were just like, Wrath of Man, what's that movie about? And people watched the first trailer and were like, oh, it's the movie where where Jason Statham kills Post Malone. Yeah, no, I know. I don't know. Where... Be down to see that. And I, I wrote it off at first. Jason Statham has been typecast for a good long while now. And you're not really looking for any Oscar winning performances here. I mean, you're just looking for a hard boiled, very, you know, stone faced, uh, monotone badass. Like that's what you're, that's what you're getting. But, and this was directed by Guy Ritchie. And if you don't know who that is, well, we're going down the list, aren't we? Uh, Guy Ritchie. The name is becoming more and more well-known, I think, for American audiences. I've known him since uh, probably the mid to early 2000s. Like, I first really learned who he was when I heard when uh, I, I saw Sherlock Holmes, the, one of the more modern adaptations of it with Robert Downey Jr. But he's also well-known, Guy Ritchie is also well-known for Snatch, which is another, like, infamous film, which is another popular film from back in the day. And most recently, a movie that was very well-marketed, uh, the Gentleman, which I loved The Gentleman. Like, I check out, I mean, I reviewed it. <laughs> so it's actually a returning director here. I don't think we've done that yet. So that's cool. But yeah, so I saw who the director was and I saw like a lot of, the, I recognized a few of the cast members and I was like, you know what? Why not? Let's give it a go and see. And you know what? Wrath of Man is, was, it surprised me. It was actually really good. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be good. I went in being like, okay, blank slate. But back in my mind, I was like, I think we know how this is going to go. But I was pleasantly surprised. Um, IMDB might disagree. But the main cast I'm going to break down um, real quick is, uh, of course, the, the, the titular star, Jason Statham. Which, I mean, again, an actor with a very extensive filmography. I, it's hard to break down what he's most well known for. He just, he just is it's a name that now is associated with action basically i consider him one of the leads of this movie uh <laughs> holt mccallany i love this man he hasn't been in a lot of stuff but what he has been in um most notably for me mind hunter i love this guy i think he's a fantastic actor and i think he does a great job in this movie as well it's all he low-key almost plays the same character in mind hunter the agent bill tench um basically it plays the same actor the same character but i have no problems with it and then uh i didn't realize who this was after the movie happened but scott eastwood is in this movie who uh low-key looks like ben barnes uh, ben barnes am i saying that right uh the guy who was the main villain in punisher and also was in westworld and also most notably now is um, one of the leads in shadow and bone i believe i think it's ben barnes benjamin barnes but um, I think Scott Eastwood looks a hell of a lot like him, but yeah, Scott Eastwood is in this movie. So, but yeah, going down the list, uh, much better than I thought. Uh, great cast. We've been over that, uh, solid action and suspense. Even when it's action scenes, he doesn't get too carried away. Everything is pretty clear. And I, I never got lost in terms of what was going on. I was actually kind of impressed. Um, it's a very violent film, very violent. I don't know if you would say gory, like people aren't getting like rims lipped off and blowing up or whatever, but people are definitely getting shot. People are getting hella shot in this movie. For an action film, I mean the gun sequences, I mean the the, the, the foley work, the audio work rather for the gunshots, everything pops, it's very satisfying. There's some hand to hand, which I always like hand to hand, it's why I loved Nobody so much, but uh, it's more gunplay focused, a little bit of hand to hand, but mostly gunplay focused and mostly just pistols, honestly. Granted, there are some scenes later on with like actual heavy rifles and whatnot, but a lot of it's just pistols. I think if we're going to get to my cons on this movie, because I don't want to spoil the film or anything, so I won't go too much into plot details. Um, 
Uh, things are a tad bit predictable, I guess. Um, I there were some like minor twists that I could kind of see coming, but there are also some like interesting narrative aspects for certain characters and plot progression that I was like, oh, that's a nice little take on that. Although, again, we're not reinventing the wheel here. One thing I've always wanted more, because I feel like I get peaks and glimpses of it in films like this, I would love to see Jason Statham in more, in more roles than just this. Like, in this movie, he's playing a character who has to have, like, his, his motions are more reserved, but you can tell there's, like, determination in his actions and there's motive there's determination there's motive there's pain in scenes there's anger for sure righteousness uh and all that but i want to i feel like as an actor he could tap into this well of greater emotional depth for films and maybe there's some out there that you could point my way but i just see him as like a grizzle a grizzled stone cold like very like dry humor just action star and all that but like i feel like there's more that i could see and i would like to see more but this is one of the films where it's like if you're on the fence about him like maybe it'd win you over a little bit like because he i mean i definitely bought his character I, I was with his character i was rooting for his character even so i mean that's something and then i suppose one of my big complaints about this was uh th there's one like the soundtrack right there's one track they keep using over and over again throughout most of the film or slight variations of it and it's a killer track and it matches the mood and the tone perfectly it's a it's a baner i mean like a baner baner but i mean like it, it match it go it matches really well and i loved it but they that's all they play there's some variations of it and like maybe like another song here or there like like a music wise but i felt like they really could have gone all in for the music for this film and uh they missed the mark a little bit for me there. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot much else to say. Um, I would go as far as to say this is this is worth seeing in theaters. I'm probably gonna buy it, honestly. Again, I was surprised, but it was well shot, well put together, uh, well done overall as a film. Uh, good characters, good action. I cared about the story and the way that everything kind of transpired. I, w I was in it, and there are scenes where like, it was really tense. And I was just like, oh my god, how, what, what, what's going to happen? How's this going to go down? And even when the action pops off and you get into it and you're like, oh my god, look, look out for it. And like, you, you, you know what I'm talking about. Like, you get sucked into it. Was it as good as like Mad Max level action? Like, no, nah, probably not. Like, you know, it's, it's hard to top Fury Road. But for what this was, um, coming off of Gentleman, I still, I still liked the Gentleman more. But uh, this was kind of, this was like, this was, this was like the Gentleman if the violence wasn't implied and there were just like a lot more shootouts and less character depth, I think. I think the gentleman was more about the characters and Wrath of Man is more about just, you know, your typical revenge quest uh, slash like heist movie. I joked with my friend uh, franchise uh, after the film because halfway through, the first thought that went through my head was, oh, so this is what the town was trying to be because spoiler alert, I don't like the town. I, I think it's, I think it's, you know, it's a movie, it exists, good on everybody who worked on it, I didn't like the town that much. I'm not going to get into it, but I felt like this was like a better version of the town. <laughs> that might be slandered because the reviews online don't agree with me. <laughs> but, you know, Rotten Tomatoes isn't always something to go by, and I, I don't think you should always, and following people's ratings, are, it's a difficult endeavor. You really want to pick somebody who you agree with in terms of taste and that way you can kind of trust their opinions and preferences. Although, always be open to whatever, but I digress. Yeah, I would say overall, um, uh, Wrath of Man, probably a... Uh, again this week, another low 4 out of 5. Uh, way, way above average, not near perfect, but um, a really, really good film. Um, a great film, I'd say. Like I said, definitely going to buy it when it comes out, and I'm going to watch it again at some point in the future. I was surprised by how much I liked it, but yeah, I just say low four, low four out of five, but it's up there. Uh, if you get a chance to catch it in theaters, I don't think it's in theaters anymore, but give it a go. Uh, definitely worth a rent, and uh, yeah, check it out. But that's about all there is to it. So as always, thank you so much for watching uh, my review for Wrath of Man, and stay tuned for the next episode of whatever movie review I end up doing. So goodbye, travelers.